Hi again. In this video we're going to add a, an output. We'll add an LED to our input so that when we press the push button it will turn on the an LED on the breadboard. So let's get started with making the circuit. So I'm going to take a 220 ohm resistor. This will limit the current for the LED, but not limit it so much that it's not going to be bright enough. And then we'll get an LED. And remember that uh, I indicated in the first video, the long one is the one that goes to plus 5 volts. So We'll just plug it in here. And we will connect that to, excuse me just a second, I need to get my long jumpers. So we'll connect this to the digital pin 2 and we'll connect it to the positive side of the LED. Then we'll take our 220 ohm resistor and uh, we'll do something a little different. We'll connect it to the lower bus and then we'll connect the lower minus bus on the top to the minus bus on the bottom. So we now have the circuit running as far as I can tell. The digital 2, D2, connecting to the positive of the LED and the negative of the LED going to ground or negative. Let's just check to see that we've got the LED connected. We'll just test it by touching the plus. Okay, there's five volts there. We know that works. So we'll put it back in the, the D2 pin. So what I'm going to do is create a new variable for our LED pin, integer LED pin, and that's pin 2. And then in the setup, pin mode, LED pin as output. Semicolon. So here we will add a line before the delay and we'll get it to digital write LED pin data. So writing digitally to LED pin 0 will keep the LED off. If I write, if data is 1, then LED pin will turn on, or at least that's my thinking. So let's verify that and then upload it. And we'll switch over to the camera. And let's try it. Get 
works. Can you see that? That's better. And let's also confirm that it's outputting the same way as it did before. It's still outputting uh, through the serial port. And you should be able to see both of them now. So let's try a little experiment. Let's replace the LED with uh, a buzzer. So I have this one here. Now this one is, there's supposedly two buzzers in the kit. At least that's what it says. But um, this one here that says remove seal after washing, I think actually buzzes. The other one didn't buzz. I think maybe it's a speaker. It's a tiny little speaker. But this is the one if you're going to do it on your own. This is the one to use now. Um, it has a uh, uh, molded uh, underside. The What I think is a microphone or a speaker, I'm not sure which, looks like this. So we'll take off the uh, do not eat warning. Plug that in. Now let's see if the push button works with the buzzer. And yes, it does. Now if I want it even louder, I could get rid of this LED and jumper this to ground. And that's quite a bit louder. Now, if you wanted to, I'm not sure how long your LED would last, but you could actually put these two things in series. Now, there's a current limit to what these pins can deliver. And we may be, we may be running up against a limit if we put these two things in series. But um, you can experiment with it. Uh, if I was going to do this um, permanently, I would uh, place a buffer like a, a transistor here that would give me much more current available to be able to run these two things in series. I will put this back. Okay, let's get on to the next step. Okay, let's try something a little bit more complicated. Rather than just turn on a buzzer or turn on an LED, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, press a button and then we'll have a sequence of LEDs uh, go back and forth a couple of times like the Cylon scanner eyes, and then it will stop. And so what this will do is it will give us uh, not only input and output, but it will also introduce a for next loop. So let's get started on it. We'll disconnect our buzzer. And we'll put our outputs over here. Oh. Excuse me. Sorry about that. <clears throat> and I'm connecting, I'm using pins two, three,
four. And six. Repositions. Two hundred and twenty ohm resistors. Now, it would be really nice if you could just tie all the ends of the LEDs and use one LED and one resistor. Use one resistor to go to ground, but it doesn't work. I've tried it, believe me. So you have to use as many resistors as you have LEDs for this to work properly. Now, I don't have this written down anywhere, so I'm winging it, so to speak. Now, we don't have the, the programming running, so the two, uh, pin D2, is the only one that works when I press that button. So now I've got a bunch of LEDs, and I'm going to have to change the names of these. So I'll set them as lead pins 1 to 5, and I'll copy this like so. So let pin two, three, four, five. So I'm using pin two to six. Three, four, five, and six. Okay. Um, I need to do my 
outputs here. So we need to set all of the new LEDs as outputs. One, two, three, four, five. So that's one, two, three, four, five. Um, I'm going to comment out the serial because we don't really need serial. So comment that out. I'll comment this out. And uh, well, we'll just change this to. All right, so what I need to do is as soon as in pin becomes a one, I want to start a sequence of lights going from one side, from the right to the left, and back. So I'm going to create a four loop. And that looks like this. Four, and in brackets, data equals, sorry, data equals one. Oops. Comma data is greater than equals to equal to let's see six. Let's try that. Data plus plus. And then I put this in curly brackets. So what this is going to do is it's going to, oops, I'll take that one away. All right, so inside this for next loop, it's going to count up. From one to six, is that how it works? Let's try that and see. So I'll do a digital write. Cut this out. So inside this we'll do digital write lead pin one true. So what that means, or we could just say one. One and true are the same thing. Zero and false is, are the same thing. And we'll just work our way up with the digital writes. Two, three, four, five. And here we'll create a delay. And we'll put in create another variable integer. D. 
for delay equals, let's set it at 100 for 100 milliseconds. So delay D, and we'll put each of those in between and we'll turn it off. So we'll turn lead pin 1 on, we'll delay it for 100 milliseconds, and then we'll turn it off. Then we'll turn the next one on, we'll delay that, and then we'll turn that one off. One on, one off, two on, two off, two three. On off, on off, on off. On, off, on, off, on, delay, off. Two, two, three, three, four is on. Delay, four is off, five is on, delay, and five is off. And then what we need to do is we need to, let's see, we need to do the same thing in the opposite direction. So this will be five on. And five. Do we need this one? It's already on. So this would be four. Four on, four off, three on, three off, two on, two off, and one on, and one off. Okay, I'll comment this out as well, and I'll save this as Cylon. See if it verifies. Nope. Okay, what am I missing here? This has to be a semicolon. Okay. 
clean this up just a bit. Okay, let's try it again. See if anything else comes up. Let's try it again. Looks like it's compiling. All right. So the proper form for the for loop is a statement where you start uh, your maximum, so your starting point, your maximum, and you're going to add one. The plus plus means add one to that. Uh, uh, value. So let's upload it and we'll now switch over to our camera. Well, that didn't go too badly. I'm kind of surprised it went as well as it did. It's not about the same speed that we need to be. Let's, uh, let's try to do something a little bit. Make it a little bit more interesting. Okay. So let's try uh, slowing it down. So we'll change uh, our delay to 200 milliseconds and upload it. It's maybe a little bit too slow. Well, at any rate, this is it. We'll send it back to 100. Upload. And there's our Cylon lights. Now, the uh, lights are working, but it's not picking up when I've pressed the button and it's just going. It's not stopping. Hmm. Okay. Well, I'm going to have to think about that, so uh, I'll be back in just a second. So there are a couple of things wrong. The first thing is that uh, our plan of being able to initiate this back and forth LED uh, Cylon movement, um, just it just keeps going forever. It doesn't start when I click the button. The other thing, I don't know if you can see this, but actually this first LED flashes twice. So we need to at least fix that and then we'll fix the button press. So I think our problem here is that we are turning the LED uh, lead pin 1 on here but then we're also turning it on and then off at the end. So my thinking is that we should just let's see 
comment this out. Let's try that, see how that works. That works much better. Okay. So we need to add another conditional here. We'll use an if else. So we are we've read the input pin. So we need to test for the input pin. So if data equals one, we will do all of these things. I'm push this over to clean it up, increase the indent. Okay, so this should run now three times. Oh, one other thing. Conditionals, if we're doing a conditional and we're testing for equals, this won't work the way it is. We have to use, oops, we have to use this for data equals equals one. This will test to see if this equals one. Having a single equal sign just makes data equal one. What we want to do is we want to ask if data does equal one. And if it does, then we'll do these things. So let's see if this works. We'll verify it first. And then we'll... Okay. Hey, it works. Amazing. Okay, let's sit back to our display. And let's uh, clean this up a little bit. And then the final thing I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to eliminate this. We can actually test this by writing it this way. So we'll take digital read in pin, copy that. We can just ask if digital read in pin equals one. And it will do it. Let's test that and see. Oops. Right, so I got rid of data. So now what I can do is I can just create an integer here, call it n if n is less than or equal to 3, and n plus plus. Let's see if that compiles. Yes, it does. Upload it. It's just a little bit more efficient this way. Okay, so I guess that does it. That's a demonstration of inputs and outputs and a conditional loop, if, 
and 4. See you next time.